Vibrational motion involves an object moving back and forth along the same positions. So the two main characteristics of vibrational motion is first, when it's at rest, it's at the equilibrium position and it vibrates around this equilibrium position. And second, when the object is displaced from this equilibrium position, a restoring force tries to pull it back to equilibrium. So here we have a coat attached to a, a, a wall by a spring. So here it's at rest at the equilibrium position. And then if we pull it to the right, the spring, since it's displaced from equilibrium, the spring will stretch and it will exert a force on the coat trying to pull it back to the left, which is towards the equilibrium position. So the cut moves to the left, but it overshoots the equilibrium position. So then the spring compresses, and now it exerts a restoring force to the right on the cut. So again, the cut will move to the right, but it will overshoot the equilibrium position. And then it will be was sent back to the left and then to the right, each time going past the equilibrium position. So the amplitude is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. So here is the, at the position equals zero is the equilibrium position and then the maximum displacement is signified with a plus a and a minus a. So the period is the time the object takes to make one complete vibration. So going from, if it starts at plus a, one complete vibration would be going back to zero, back to minus a, then to a, then to zero, then to plus a again. And the frequency is the number of complete vibrations that the object makes in one second. So the frequency and period are reciprocals of each other. And the unit of frequency is hertz, which is vibrations per second. But vibrations is not a unit, so hertz is really just 1 over seconds. Now, if we want to represent the displacement from equilibrium as a function of time, we can use the sine and cosine functions since they are naturally periodic. So we can represent the displacement from equilibrium as x equals a, the amplitude, cosine 2 pi over big T, the period, and little t, which is time. And we, we can also use the same equation with the sine function. So when do you use cosine or sine? Well, notice that what happens when you plug in t equals 0. So for the cosine, this function only works if the object starts at its maximum displacement. Because when t equals 0, x is equal to a. And the sine one only works when the object starts at equilibrium. Because when t equals 0, then x equals 0 also. So if the object does not start at either the maximum displacement or equilibrium position, you have to modify this function. Now, from since we're in most situations, we're going to be looking at springs. So remember that Hooke's law gives the force that a spring exerts on an object attached to it. So the force is equal to negative kx where k is some constant called the spring constant, which is specific to that particular spring. And it's negative because it pulled, the spring pulls in the opposite direction to the current displacement. For example, if the current is at a positive displacement to the right of the equilibrium position, then the spring will be pulling to the left because it's that restoring force 
trying to bring it back to the equilibrium position. And then from Newton's second law, the acceleration of the object is the net force over the mass, which is negative k over m x. So notice how both the force and acceleration are, are directly proportional to the object's displacement from equilibrium. So the further the object is from equilibrium, the more force and more acceleration it will have trying to bring it back to e the equilibrium position. Now, these are characteristics of what's called simple harmonic motion. The restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement, displacement from equilibrium. So, the period and frequency in the vibration only depend on the mass of the object and the force constant. The force constant when we're working with springs is the spring constant and it's different for each spring. So they are independent of the amplitude. So even if you have a larger amplitude, the period does not increase. And that's because the object moves faster to make up for the larger amplitude since the restoring force increases as the displacement from equilibrium increases. So the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. And the frequency is just the reciprocal of that. So these make sense because if the k force constant is larger, that means the restoring force is larger, so it will bring it, the object back to equilibrium faster so the frequency will be higher. Whereas if the mass is larger, the frequency will be smaller because the object is harder to move. So now let's look at the energy in a vibrating system. So assuming no outside work is done on the system, the total energy of the vibrating system is constant. But it cycles between elastic potential energy when the spring is compressed or stretched and kinetic energy of the moving object. So when it's at the maximum displacement, either plus A or minus A, the object is temporarily not moving. So all of the system's energy is elastic potential energy. And the equation for elastic energy is 1 half kx squared where x is the displacement from the rest position of the spring. So at plus or minus a, the total elastic energy is 1 half ka squared. Now, since there is no kinetic energy at this position, this expression is also the expression for the total energy of the system. Now, at the equilibrium position, the spring is not stretched or compressed, so the system only has kinetic energy of the moving cut. Now that means at the equilibrium position, the object is moving at its maximum speed. So it only has kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared, where v will be the maximum velocity of the object. Now everywhere else besides the equilibrium position and the maximum displacement, the system will have both elastic and kinetic energy. So now let's look at an example. So we have a 20 kilogram cut at rest attached to the wall by a spring with a force constant of 1280 newton per meter. And then we have a person, 60 kilograms, fly into the cut at 16 meters per second. And then the guy sticks to the cut and it starts some kind of vibrational motion. So first we want to know how fast is the cut moving after the, the guy hits it. So to solve this we just apply the conservation of momentum. The initial momentum of the guy plus the initial momentum of the cut 
which is 0 because the current's not moving, has to be equal to the momentum of the guy and the current combined since they stick together after the collision. So we find that the final velocity of the guy and the current combined is 12 meters per second. Now notice how when the guy hits the current and it starts the vibration, the current is at the equilibrium position because the, string, the spring is not stretched or compressed yet. So remember that at the equilibrium position, the velocity of the object is at a maximum since there's only kinetic energy. So this means this velocity is also the maximum velocity of the vibrating object. So next we want to know the amplitude of the vibration. And to do this, we can use the total energy. So the kinetic energy, at when we hit the cut, when it's at equilibrium, when the current is at its maximum displacement, all of that kinetic energy is converted into elastic potential energy of the spring. So 1 half mv squared, the total energy, is equal to 1 half ka squared. These are both expressions for the total energy of the system. So we can just solve for a, which is 3 meters. To get the period and frequency of the vibration, we just use the formula, plugging in the mass of the system, which remember is the current and the person, so it's 80 kilograms, since they're stuck together, and then k, the force constant of the spring. So the period is 1.6 seconds, and the frequency, which is the reciprocal of the period, is 0.625 hertz. So last, we want to know the, the maximum acceleration of the guy and where it occurs. So remember that acceleration is proportional to the displacement from equilibrium. So the further, uh, you, the further you are from equilibrium, the more acceleration there will be. So the maximum acceleration occurs at the maximum displacement. In other words, the amplitude. So acceleration is equal to negative k over mx. And since we want the maximum acceleration, it should be positive. So we choose neg when the object is at the negative a. And so the maximum acceleration is 48 meters per second squared.